I wanted to make a recording because I'll see postings on the uh, VATSIM uh, Facebook page about people having either apprehension about talking or they're saying, hey, you know, I wish people would uh, take it easy on me. I'm new, on, I'm new at this stuff, and they want to they just learn in a fun environment, and they need to get used to how to talk on the radio, even if it's a simulated radio. So there's, uh, I think, a good reason to give some tutorial about how to talk on an air traffic control radio frequency. And we'll talk about uh, what you can do to make your experience go a little bit better. So to input a clearance, fill in the route from the departure airport to the destination airport. You can use VORs in a sequential list or connect them with the designated airways as you see fit. Uh, sometimes a short flight doesn't need to get fancy and use the airways. Oh, fancy, fancy. Now the J-designated or jet routes are for 18,000 feet, which is flight level 180 in the U.S., and, and above that. That's where that pertains to. And below that, in the United States, it's going to be the V or Victor designated Victor Airways. And so you can connect with those between the VORs or also from intersections. And you'll see those on the charts too. Now, once you submit this clearance to, let's say, VATSIM and you have, quote unquote, filed your flight plan, uh, once you're on the, you get connected on the network, you're going to need to pick up your IFR clearance to your destination. Now, does the airport that you're starting at have a clearance delivery frequency, or do they just use the ground frequency? Maybe there's just one guy working the tower and doing the tower frequency. And, you know, even a busy airport, they may have a dedicated clearance delivery frequency, but they may only have one person on the VATSIM network who's doing everything. So you're just going to have to look at what air traffic control is there and tune them up. And they'll probably give you a few clues if you tune in the ATIS. So I'll give you a sample clearance. Let's say uh, you talk to clearance delivery, and you could say something like, King Air, November 17, Victor, requesting clearance IFR to Norfolk. And then be ready to write it down. But be aware, it's probably going to be the same as what you filed for. It's possible they could change something, but just be aware of that. And, a, and it's going to follow a very specific information template. That's very specific. I'm going to put up on the screen the clearance, and in plain English, this would be read as uh, from Richmond Airport to the Hopewell VOR, Victor Airway 189 to Wakes Intersection, then directly to Norfolk. So the clearance you receive on the radio should sound something like this. Uh, King Air November 71 Victor is clear to Hopewell, Victor 189 to Wakes, direct Norfolk. After takeoff, climb and maintain 5,000. Expect 17,000 10 minutes after departure. Contact Richmond departure on frequency 133.5, squawk 2416. Or instead of reading out the whole route, they might say, is clear to Norfolk as filed. After takeoff, maintain 5,000. Expect 17,000 10 minutes after departure. Contact departure on 133.5, squawk 2416. So you get the idea. They may not read back the whole routing, or they may give you an exception to that. But here's the pattern. And here's the thing, bro. Here's the thing. You've got your call sign. They've got how you are cleared with specific routing, whether it's what you put or it's changed, or they just say as filed. It's going to give you an initial altitude, probably in the low thousands, maybe 5,000 or 10,000. Then it'll have your expected cruise altitude that should come afterwards, maybe upwards of flight level 200 or 300. Then the frequency and agency that you would be talking to after takeoff, which would likely be a departure control frequency, but could be a center associated with some city. Then lastly, they'll give you the transponder code, uh, euphemistically referred to as a squawk. Squawk, squawk, any squawk, squawk. <gasps> and it's only going to have digits 0 through 7, no 8 or 9. Now I'm going to tell you quite honestly here in 
40 years of flying in the real world that when they say 10 minutes after departure and it's referred to, it's always spoken and yet it has no relevancy whatsoever. Irrelevant. To what and when you will be cleared to your final altitude. So sometimes half an hour into the flight, you're still not quite up to your cruise altitude. And a lot of times they get you close and they tell you that's going to be your final. So you, you never really get there. But that's not a problem. I can only tell you one thing is certain about when you're going to climb to that cruise altitude. And that is that it's only going to happen when air traffic control clears you to do it. I've seen lots and lots of intermediate altitude clearances before getting up there. I've seen worse. I've seen better. And I've seen times where it's the very first altitude received after the initial, maybe even before reaching the initial. But in any case, IFR flying is about doing what is expected in your clearance, even if it's implied and not spoken. And one example I mean by that is climb via the such and such SID. So you look at it and you see that it has some number of altitude constraints, maybe at or below, or at or above, or just plain cross at a particular altitude. So you do it, and you comply with the speeds. That's as fast as you can go until they say you can resume normal speed. So approach departure control goes to hand me over to some other frequency, and I asked him, before I go, can I get normal speed from you? And he just laughs and says, you're like the only guy that follows that, so we never really give out normal speed. Not funny. And so I got a laugh out of that, but in the real world, you have to pay attention to those speeds that are on the departures and the arrivals, or else you can get in big trouble. We don't want any trouble, gentlemen. So I just want to wrap this whole thing up before it goes on too long. This has gone on far too long. First, Always use your full call sign, and if possible, try to put it at the front of your transmission if you possibly can. And I know that we all get a little bit of brain overload from time to time and focus on the clearance, and so sometimes we'll just tag it on at the end with our call sign right at the end of the transmission. But try really hard not to do that, and I will tell you it gets easier the more you practice that. Also, Always, using your call sign, read back assigned headings, altitudes, and frequencies that you switch to. Basically anything with a number. Now, a good controller will try not to overload pilots with more than two bits of information if he or she possibly can. And that helps them, actually, because they find that they have less to clarify in retransmitting that information. So it actually helps them by limiting what they give you in one transmission. All right, I wanted to keep this short, and I'm sure there's other things that I can still cover, and I might even need a part two on this whole uh, clearance thing, but that's going to be it for now. Remember, learn the basics. Don't be one of those guys that's just trying to sound cool on VATSIM. Be genuine. Keep it real. Keep it concise. Use the terms you've read about and the way you've been taught. Keep on flying, and I'll catch you later, folks.